To make a start on our blueprint, we will, in this video, set up a system that checks whether or not the player is close enough to an object so as to be able to change its material. We also want to make sure that there is a visual cue for the player when this becomes true. There are many ways in which this could be done, but again, for simplicity's sake, we are going to go with some good old fashioned floating text. Inside the content browser then, we want to double click and open up the sm underscore matte change static mesh actor and gain access to its graph. After right clicking, we want to search for and add an event actor begin overlap node and then right click once more and add an event actor end overlap node. And these event overlap nodes will be triggered by the collision box component that is already set up in our blueprint this having been created in the same way as the automatic door collision trigger. We want to be able to tell when the player is out of range as well as when they are in range, which is why we have used the end and begin variants of this node. This will ultimately work as an override to the line trace distance value. With the collision event set up, we now want to click to create a new variable via the plus button. Call it can use making sure its type is set to boolean. After which, we can compile the blueprint and make sure that its default setting is unchecked. A boolean variable is a simple yes, no, on off variable, which we are using just to make sure that there is no accidental way in which the blueprint can be tricked into firing or executing when the player is not really close enough to be able to do so. Although these kinds of systems aren't always required, it's good to have a safety net should we do something wrong in the creation of the blueprint. From here, we can now drag out two instances of the newly created Boolean variable, and when prompted, select the set option. Once we have the two variables in the graph, we will want to put a check in the first variable Booleans option, and make sure the second node is unchecked. We need two set node types, so that we can change when the rest of the blueprint can be executed. We do need a way to trigger these two nodes, however, and so let's pipe the execution port of the begin overlap node into the first set variable, and the end overlap node into the second set variable. This means that whenever the player is close to the chair actor and collides with the collision trigger, the can use variable will be set to true. As the player moves away, and exits the trigger box, the variable will then be set to false so that the player can no longer interact with it. We are setting this particular logic up simply because the line trace distance that we use for the light switch might be too long in the case of furniture in a room, which could be placed quite close together. We can happily leave the line trace distance alone then and force the line trace to be recognized via this can use variable. Let's make the system a little more user-friendly by dragging the text component onto the graph in order to create a reference to it. Once added, we can drag from its output and then search for and add two set visibility nodes from the rendering rollout. These will let us turn the text on when the player can use the chair actor and turn it off when they can't. This being the kind of visual clue that can help avoid the problem of clients missing the functionality that we have built into a level. We might want a more subtle version creating later on, of course, but the principles that we are going to make use of here will work on plenty of other options as well. On the first set visibility node then, let's put a check in the new visibility box and then make sure that the second is unchecked. After which we can pipe the two set nodes execution outputs into the inputs which, as already noted, means that our text should now appear exactly when we want it to. What we've seen here then, is that when using one blueprint to control multiple aspects of a project, such as in the case of our line trace, we may need to add other features to the blueprint, such as our can use variable, in order to add flexibility and control over the effects. We also see the benefit of adding visual cues so that the player doesn't miss aspects of the visualization piece that can add to the experience.